we're going to start off by doing this Peter Rabbit stoneware picture. You can see their price was $49.50. I'm going to show you how to make this on a much smaller budget. So we're going to take some tissue paper and I'm going to tape this over a piece of cardstock. I'm just going to use my tape, go around the edges of each side of this paper and just secure it down. What we're going to do is use our inkjet printer to print out a color photo of Peter Rabbit that I found and I will link that for you. So I have a nice straight edge and that's the end I want to go into the printer. Look at this beautiful picture. Love it. Again, the links are going to be below for you and you can check that out on my Pinterest. I have lots of freebies over there. All right, and this is a thrifted picture that I got. Can you believe that? There's not even a chip out of it. It's in perfect condition. But I'm going to wipe it off and get all of my little oils off my from my hands and from the thrift store and wherever else. Get that all off. You can wash with soap and water if you want to and you just let it dry really well and then you can use it. I'm going to take this little mini cutting board. I had already measured this against the picture so I know what size I'm going to need. And I'm just going to go ahead and trim it down. You want to use a pencil on the tissue paper, not a pen that might bleed. You don't want to make a mess. So go ahead and cut to the inside of the line. And originally I thought that I would leave this oval or egg shape on the picture, but you'll see I change it up just a little bit in a minute. I'm going to go ahead and save some of the other graphics from this picture. I'm going to cut out the shovel with the bird and then there are some cabbages or lettuce, whatever type of greens that are on there that I wanted to cut out of the garden and use those as well. Because really, we call them dupes, but for me, this is more like an inspiration. Pottery Barn was an inspiration, but you get the same type of a look. So this is where I decide, mm, maybe I want to cut this down a little bit. In the end, it didn't really matter, but you'll see. So just watch how I do it and then decide which way you would prefer to do it cutting it all out, little messy, fussy cutting in the beginning, or just wait to the end. And I know that I want it to fit on this part of the picture. I'm going to add my Mod Podge, and I'm just using some glossy Mod, Pod, Mod Podge because this picture is glossy. I'm going to put this down and then lay my tissue down. You want to be careful because tissue is fragile. Where it is lifting away, I'm just going to cut little slits and then tuck it and overlap it. If it's wrinkled, it doesn't really matter. It's not as noticeable because this isn't a thick paper. This is just a tissue paper. And it's gonna lay down nice and smooth. And what I'm doing now is just smoothing it out with my fingers to make sure that I don't tear it. And I do have some glue on my fingers. You can see there to the left, I have some glue on my fingers. That way I don't have dry fingers on that wet paper and tear it. Then I decide, how about adding some of these pieces of greens up here on the top of the picture to just kind of extend the color and the picture on the top because they're in our inspiration piece they do have little bits and pieces throughout so i thought maybe that would be good on our picture so i'll show you how to do it and if you choose not to use it if you know you don't want to use the smaller pieces you certainly do not have to do that but if you want to this is how you do it so I'm just looking at where I want to put it because once you put it down, you can't lift it up. Can't lift it. It will tear. So there was a little bit already on there. I'm just putting it down and then I'm going to use my little soft flat brush and my fingers to place it down. I'm going to do the same thing just here and there where I think I want to put those pieces. Then I'm going to get, take some Mod Podge, go over the top with this. Uh, again, this is a soft brush because a stiff brush would tear the tissue. You don't want to do that. Now I'm going to continue around and just put that wherever I want to put it. But I like it like that. I think it looks nice. And then I'm going to turn this picture around. And since it's still slightly wet from the Mod Podge, I'm going to prop it up on this wreath. And then I'm going to go ahead and put my the little shovel piece with the little bird on the back. All right, so now, because I don't like the rough edges around there, it's just, 
I don't like it. I don't think it blends in well. I just don't like it. I'm going to take a stiff brush after this is all dry and I'm going to take some white paint and I'm going to stipple it all around the edges so that I can create somewhat of a egg or oval shape. It's going to make it blend more into the picture and it just gives it a better look in my opinion. But you, you can do this whichever way you like it. And you can certainly, without stippling, go around it with a, a brush and just make a, you know, a stiffer, more rigid or exact line if you wanted to. But I want mine to be stippled and dreamy and watercolor and cottagey. And I think that I do achieve that in the end. And you can just let me know what you think about it. You see how that blends it out? I love it. I'll be using this method again, of course, because I really like it. And then once I start adding this down and putting it around, I thought, you know what? This picture would be really pretty if the entire thing was stippled. So I went ahead and took that same white paint. I think that is wicker white that I'm using. And I'm going to just take that all the way around to the outside and then continue around the entire picture. I do this also around the little greens that I have on the top kind of go around the edges of those and that helps blend that out because it is darker. That's a, like a richer color than what it looks like on my piece in the middle. So I'm just going to continue all the way around. Now if you don't have a stippling brush and a lot of people don't, they don't have these brushes, um, you can most definitely use a sponge and I have a little piece cut over there and I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. But you're just going to pounce it up and down. I'm not dragging it at all. I'm just pouncing up and down. And it leaves like bristle prints. And it's a really pretty texture. With a sponge, you want to be sure that you tear that so you don't have any hard lines on it. And then just start pouncing that all over. And it, it does really well. It does give it the same type of a look. And so here's a close-up so you can see what that looks like. And then um, you just continue around that print that's on the back go around there. So now you have two options. You can use a brush or you can use a sponge. I wouldn't recommend a makeup sponge. I like these sponges and I did get mine from Dollar Tree. It was a bath sponge. So now we're going to go on to the Essex Bunny. $29.50 to $39.50. Can you believe that? All right, I'm going to start off with some Rust-Oleum Ultra Matte Slate Gray Paint and I'm going to take my little ceramic bunnies. I have a little tea light ceramic bunny and then a larger one. And I'm going to take them outside and spray paint them. They don't have to be perfect. You can see I pointed out some little spots that were still white. And then once it is definitely good and dry, you don't want any tackiness left, you can go on to the next step. I'm going to take some of this paint. It's a dark gray. And I'm going to mix it with some baking soda. I don't have exact measurements for you here. You're just going to play around until you get to the right consistency. So I have probably a little over a tablespoon of the baking soda in the cap there and then I've added some of the gray paint and it's about a tablespoon of paint probably. I'm going to mix that in. I'm just using a little stick here that I use on my paints and my things like that just to mix it up. And then you can see the texture of that. Okay, it's kind of like a cake icing. You want it to be thick because you want it to have little bumps and grooves and mix in here. For what I'm doing, I want this to have a cement look. Is it exactly like the Essex Bunnies from Pottery Barn? No, it is not exactly like that. But it is an option if you like a concrete look. And I think it gives you the same feel in the end. But you can let me know when you see the end results. So I am just kind of dragging and going up and down and back and forth. Um, I don't want to have an exact pattern on here. I want to go in all different directions, get in the cracks around the tail, the grooves, um, the feet, the ears, the eyes, the mouth, under the neck. And once you get all that down, you can just sit it down and then work on the part above it. See, I had a little fingerprint. I had to get that all cleaned out. You can get these little bunnies at Target Dollar Spot. You could probably get something like this. The Dollar Tree, maybe. I don't know. I haven't I haven't seen them, but maybe. I've had mine for years. They've been white in my Easter collection for so long. 
and we're going to take the larger one and this one actually to me turned out better because it is it was originally more textured you can see the little lines and dips um, kind of gives it like a texture to the fur so it, it works really well with this one I'm just going to continue on just like I did with the smaller one and go all around them and then when they're dry this is what they look like and you really want to make sure they're dry I let mine dry overnight they will dry to the touch sooner than that though I'm gonna take two short little um, I call them stippling brushes but they're stencil brushes I'm gonna take some white chalk paint and just go around the where the grooves would be okay now this was my first time doing this so give me some grace here because I really I, I talked to myself and I was thinking oh my goodness what have you done this is not gonna be this is gonna be a disaster but as I keep going along I kind of got a feel for it and you'll see that as it progresses through here so in the beginning when you start doing this and if it looks terrible do not give up on yourself it is just paint and we can fix it right we can fix it so I put this in fast motion so you could see here the progression without having to watch every single step and get bored with me so just hang in there hang in there okay so this is what it looks like at first and then I decide okay we're gonna go in and we're gonna add some more by the time I got done with the little bunny I had much more confidence in myself to move on to the larger bunny and this one I was much happier with again it goes in in steps and it takes some time to accomplish the look that you like with this technique but I promise you if you hang in there it's gonna get better see right now my bunny does not look so wonderful right it really doesn't look that great but I'm gonna keep going and I'm gonna layer it on just a little bit at a time I think that's the key to this technique don't go too heavy-handed because you see the difference when I use a lighter approach on this side isn't that better I think that looks so much better and it really does give it a concrete look to me you know to me it does and maybe if you wanted to go with a lighter gray underneath you could you know you could mix that in and get a little bit of a lighter look but I like this be sure that you get around the eyes around the ears the feet the toes the mouth around the neck and y'all don't be so concerned about where your bunnies come from you can get them anywhere so here we go with the finished one and I decided to go just a little bit heavier on this little one gotta accent his little nose a little bit better I look like I'm punching him in the nose but it makes a difference look at his little cute nose and then a dry brush on top of that and so I went a little heavier handed on the small one and then not so much so on the large one now we're going to do a stone Easter Bunny. 69 to $207. Uh-uh. Nope. Let me show you how I did it. I'm going to add some chalk paint here. And I think this was my plaster chalk paint and some baking soda. This time I kind of got the texture right the first time. And then I'm going to show you how it looks. I'm just using a little spatula to show you. It looks a little bit like a lighter, easier cake batter or like frosting same situation here it's gonna be super thick it starts to dry pretty quick um, if you have a, a problem maybe with your texture this paint texture sticking on to that ceramic please seal it first use some type of a sealer get you some Mod Podge something like that and it'll help it stick better with this terracotta bunny it stuck perfectly it was this this I should have done this years ago I should have tried this but you know a lot of times in life we let fear keep us away from doing things and we have doubt and that carries over into our crafting you know we're not what not always adventurous in everything we do but it's okay to try it you know it's paint you can always start over and if you get something from the thrift store this little bunny came from the thrift store you know it I mean, how much money are you really wasting if you try it you're still saving so much money compared to what you would if you went to Pottery Barn and got it I'm not paying 27 or 207 dollars for anything in my house I promise 
not unless it's a big piece of furniture. Okay, so after it is dried, and again, it dried overnight as well, I'm gonna take this sponge and tear it until there are no fine edges on it. I want it to be just kind of a loose look. I'm adding some of my antiquing wax down into a little bit of water, and then I'm gonna use this sponge to start applying it. I'm gonna just pounce this up and down, and I wanna get all over Bunny. Again, you probably wanna seal your products first, you know, your projects first, before you put it down because if you are a little heavy-handed and this is a this is water that you're putting on here now water and chalk paint it's not water resistant it can crack i had a little bit of a problem on the smaller bunny but i fixed it um but yeah i suggest that you go ahead and put a layer of mod podge on it or spray sealer or something like that so that it has some grip to hold on to all right so I put this in fast motion. You can see the progression. You can see that he's starting to look like he's aged. And I love that. He's looking like he's been sitting outside for a while. Yes, Mr. Bunny, bring it. I love it. I think it's cute. So after it is dried completely, then you can lightly go back over like on the ears, on the feet, on the tail, any areas that they have, you know, a little more detail, go ahead and put it there. That's how it would age anyway. You know, pollen falls on it, dust falls on it, and this is how it would be. Make him nice and cute, both of them. Get it as aged as you want it to look, and then be sure you put it someplace and let it dry completely. I didn't seal my bunnies at all, and I love the way they look. They're so cute. Love them. See, I've been able to give them some new life instead of donating them. Yes. I love that age look. So here are our bunnies now in the end. These are our inspired dupes. You can see how aged they look. And I think these look like stone. And I think that the gray bunnies do look like concrete. And what do you think about that picture? I believe in you and I believe that you can do these projects. I would love to have you as a member of my family, so subscribe if you enjoy these videos. We're going to make a wreath. You're going to need possibly some flowers and some greenery. I got these cute little shamrock picks of two different colors from Dollar Tree. So there's a dark pick and then a pick that's light and dark. I'm going to use two of these gorgeous little scarves and a shamrock frame. I'm also going to use some of these. This is a berry garland. Mine came from Christmas at Dollar Tree, but you can get it pretty much year round. I'm gonna use a variety of ribbons, both thrifted and Dollar Tree. So we're gonna start off by covering this frame and we're gonna do it with the scarf. It only takes one scarf to do this and one zip tie. So we're gonna start by just kind of bunching up the bottom and we wanna have a little piece that we can attach with the zip tie. So I'm going to go around the frame in the middle and cross the, the center section there so that it won't move around when we're putting this on and this will kind of lock it in place. So once we get it where we want it, just go ahead and cut that off. I'm just using some little cutters here, but you can certainly use an old pair of scissors if you have them. I'm going to tuck that to the inside of the frame. And then rather than just wrapping this around tightly all the way around, which would cause you to have to use more than one scarf, we are going to stretch this out and get full coverage by doing it the right way. So I'm gonna start by adding a little bit of glue and taking the edge of that scarf and just wrapping it right there. Make sure that you're flipping the right side out when you do this so that you get the pretty side you don't want your words to be backwards. So you can see I'm kind of pulling this down. I'm gonna leave it ruched slightly. I don't want to have all of the, you know, wrinkles out of it, but I wanna make sure that I am really stretching it as far as I can take it 
so that my $1.25 scarf will make it all the way around this entire frame. And it's a pretty big frame. It's very impressive to have gotten something like this from Dollar Tree. And of course, I should have picked up two so that I would be certain to have one for next year because you know how it goes at Dollar Tree. When you see it, you better get it. All right, so I'm gonna continue along here and just wrap around those corners and especially around the corners and the insides of the of the wreath you want to make sure that you just add little dots of glue you don't need to make a mess just something to kind of keep it where it needs to be and you can see so far that I've got all of the scarf that I need to make it around the top part of this shamrock which was very nice I'm just doing the same thing I did before and I wanted to leave all of this in so you could see that it does fit now I'm gonna take the second one and do the bottom part then that look nice I love the variety of colors there so I'm going to now work on the bottom I'm just seeing how much I think I'm going to need here and it needs to be enough to go over the front and then overlap the back and attach together on the back side so I'm just gonna fold this over so none of my raw seams are poking out. And I'm gonna cover the frame. I'm gonna make sure I have about an inch and a half on the bottom so that I can overlap it and enough to cover the bottom part. So you can see here, we have a nice edge. I'm just folding this under around that. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Just kind of pulling it and rolling it over gives it a nice flat finished on the front maybe kind of messy in the back but we're gonna fix that when we pull this piece over I'm gonna pull it over and then glue it right down and then of course you want to bend up the bottom and then overlap it and kind of sandwich it in so now the frame is complete and we're gonna work on a bow I'm gonna use my thrifted ribbon here this stuff catches on everything but it's so pretty it gives a really nice a really nice look so you can see here how I'm measuring my loops and I'm going to continue along with 12 inch loops or 12 inch pieces which are going to make six inch loops and I want to be sure that I do four of these because I almost want it to kind of give you an idea of a four leaf clover right I mean it's St. Patrick's Day don't we want a little look of course we do so you can see there four leaves I'm gonna clip it and then I'm going to take a zip tie and zip it up originally I had a different type of second bow but don't be bothered by the one you see in the corner up there because I'm gonna change it I decided to change it so now I'm just pulling this down and I've got my four leaves now this is the bow that we're going to do to go on top and it's gonna be about eight inch you're gonna do eight inches and then fold it over and over so that you have two loops on each end and that will give you another bow with four loops how perfect is that and this is such an easy bow I'm gonna take a piece of jute because maybe you don't have zip ties and I'm going to just give this a couple of knots in the center this is some really strong jute and I really like that so we're gonna fluff that bow out and get it ready to go right across the other bow. So go on between two of the loops so that there's two on one side, two on the other. I'm gonna wrap that jute around and I'm gonna give it a few knots and that's gonna hold it nicely in place. All right, so there we go. And then you can fluff a little bit and I wanna make sure that it is going across the center and the stem part of the clover. You see how I did that? And that's just so our bow does not move around when we fluff it. I don't want it to lose the position. So it's kind of locked into place when you put it like this. And you see I have very long tails on that bow, that sheer bow underneath. I love that, that's exactly how I want it. You can trim yours down if you would like. And then you can trim down the little tails on the inside of the short bow. I'm just cut mine in a slant and then move things around that's the beauty of not having glue here right 
you can move things around and you can make that bow look however you want that's why it takes so much fluffing to make a bow look gorgeous i get a lot of comments on my bows and i really appreciate that but for those of you who lack confidence in your bow making skills just keep fluffing and i promise you're going to come up with something beautiful so now it's time to embellish the bow right we're going to add some greenery to it because you know rustic and cottage you know how we do here I'm going to just kind of look at how I want it placed before I put the glue on and then I'll start placing it down and I kind of want this to be a little bit wild and going around and just accentuating and really setting off my pretty bow and by the way if you choose to use green ribbon you can certainly do that Dollar Tree does have green ribbon and maybe you have some thrifted ribbon that maybe you used for Christmas you loved it then, you can love it now. Pull that stuff back out and use it. So just want to put it here and there and I'm using, you know, a variety. I'm using some of my mixed shamrocks and I'm using some of the darker ones. And then I thought, you know what? I'd really like to add something on a smaller scale with a little more body to it. So these little picks that I also had thrifted fit perfectly into that. The coloring is great it's kind of variegated and that looks really nice with the different colored shamrocks and it just all fits in really well together I think now we're gonna make some of these little twirly looking pieces see how easy that is you can use a pencil though you don't have to use a chopstick whatever you have and then trim it down the way you like it and this is just gonna add, just gonna add a little magic to it I'm gonna add some little flyaways to it and kind of give it that little, you know, it just makes it a little more charming, I think. And what is St. Patrick's Day if not magical, right? So just keep adding, look at it from all sides, like I always say, and from up and down, and make it just like you like it. There is no right or wrong when you are making your own creations. Okay, so now you just see me taking a little piece of that same jute, and making a little hanger for it. I'm gonna put it up here in the center top and add some glue and that's how it's gonna be hung. We're gonna start with this little laundry room sign and I'm going to take some window cleans. Don't we love these? This is such easy projects. I'm so glad that y'all are here with me today and you're watching these little last minute ideas. You're gonna choose whichever ones you like and then Take your chalk paint and just cover up this laundry room wording. It's very cute as it is. And by the way, I do have another one that I may just be using in my laundry room. But after it is done and dried, you can see it took me two coats though to get all that black wording covered up. And don't worry, it is slightly indented into there. You're not going to notice. So now you get to do the fun part, which is playing around with how you want your picture to look giving you a couple of different ideas then you're gonna take that Mod Podge you can also get that at Dollar Tree you can also get flat brushes at the Dollar Tree you see what I'm doing here you see where I'm going with this theme here and then I'm just going to add down the ones that I've chose and I decided just to use the truck with Lucky on the back and Irish across the top I do have a little Irish in me y'all I had my little ancestry things done and I have a little bit of Irish, not much. Okay, so we're going to go over here and then lock it all in place with the Mod Podge. This will make everything have a matte finish and it'll look like it was meant to be. So this time I have a little mason jar and this one came from Christmas. You can just cut off that little piece there. I'm gonna take my utility knife and score this because I do not want to remove that metal looking top. Even though that's drawn on there, that's actually an applique, I want it to stay there and I don't wanna scrape it off accidentally. And I don't want it to get wet when I do this part. I'm just covering it to protect it, spraying it with some water and then rubbing my hands all over it because it did not wanna peel off easily. You can see I tried to peel it so I decided to wet it down and now I'm using a little, it's like a little chisel tool or a woodworking tool that I happen to have got in a set at Dollar Tree. And I'm just scraping this off. 
You can sand it too. Whichever way you like to remove it will be absolutely fine. So once that is done, it's clean and dry, you can go ahead and paint it. Now this time I'm using a different, um, a different color white. This one is plaster. This has a little bit more of a cream color um, instead of that bright white. I love that and I think it's going to be perfect for this little piece. I'm just going to cover everything except that top. I want to leave that there. We're going to set it aside and let it dry. Now, once it's done, even though it's not perfect, I don't mind that, you can either grab that glue stick or you can use that Mod Podge again. Either way, I'm going to choose which appliques I want to put on it. And this little truck happened to be an almost a perfect fit. No worries, we're going to trim it down. You can cut off the excess and I also cut the little, you can see there's like a little shadow of mud on the tires. I cut that off as well. Cut it as much as you need to to get it to fit. And look at that, perfect. So now I'm gonna lay down a layer of Mod Podge all over where I'm gonna be putting my little appliques and then put them where they need to go. I'm gonna use two. So I'm gonna use this little honk if you're Irish and the Happy St. Patrick's Day banner that was on there. Now it's gonna be trimmed down quite a bit to fit, but that's okay, you know, that's easy to do. And then you can just keep laying it down, looking at it, eyeballing it, and trimming it till you get it exactly the right size to go on yours. And then once it's down, same process, we're gonna take some more Mod Podge and lock it in place. It wasn't that easy and so cheap. Once it is dry, I'm going to take a little bit of this. This is like a kind of a lacy trim piece. Uh, it's made out of like burlap that my husband bought from Amazon. He bought it in a pack. And I thought this cream color looked really nice with this. So I'm just going to glue it on the back and then add a dot of glue on the front to hold it in place. Now, if you want to add something extra, take one of your extra shamrocks from the earlier project and just glue it on here. But I think it's perfect just the way it is. But you do you and make it perfectly you. Here are our little items all staged. I love the little jar, I think it's so cute. There are times when you can find these at Dollar Tree, but they usually go fast. That's why I wanted to make them to show you that you could still have that look if you like it. I believe in you. I want you to believe in yourself. I want you to stop doubting that you're creative. We all are. We all have that little spark that God gave us. We all have creativity inside of us. And we can do this. We can make beautiful things for all our Right. Home. We're going to start off with some vine. And my ivy is actually from the thrift store. I have some Dollar Tree pansies. They do have some mixed colors like this. And they have some that are you know, all the same color on each pick. I have some leftover thrifted daisies. I'm gonna use a styrofoam ball to put down in my little container here. I have some tissue paper with pansies. It's very pretty and it matches the pick. This came from the donations that I got from a very nice person. And I'm going to reuse it. I have seen things similar to this at Dollar Tree, so you can just use your imagination. And then I am going to just place this down and cut it out. I'm going to be using the back side because it's already white, so I can save myself a step and not have to paint. I'm going to use my glue stick. I love the purple because it shows you where you have your glue, and then it just vanishes and disappears. So I'm just lightly pressing this down and outward to just kind of start pressing out the bubbles and making sure that it is stuck down and I'm going to take my little roller here and just go over the top to make sure it's nice and flat. Using a sanding block I'm going to just shear off the edges and this will give it a nice clean finish and it almost gives it the look of being painted on here which I really love. So I'm just going to take a pick that is a little smaller than the diameter of the holes that were there 
and just go right through there and go all the way through to the back so that it pushes that paper inside the hole and it gives you a nice finish. I found this beautiful cording. I think I got it at the Dollar Tree. Pretty sure that I did get it at the Dollar Tree. It's yellow and white. It's like a baker's twine, but you can use raffia or whatever you choose. Then go through here and thread them together and then push them up through the hole in the top and tie a knot. Now talking about tissue paper for a moment, if pansies are not your thing, just go to Dollar Tree, pick out some tissue paper that you like that's floral, and then go to the floral section and choose some coordinating flowers. That's all you have to do if you don't want to make it exactly like mine. Totally understandable. We're all about making it our own on this channel. So just use this as inspiration. So now just to make sure that it doesn't slip through the top, even though I've got double and triple knots, I'm going to add a little bit of hot glue right to the hole so that this will sit on top of it. And cut off my extras because I don't need it and then just pick off the little, the little webs that form there. You can also get wood cutouts at Dollar Tree. Mine are thrifted. I'm going to look at my variety of spring cutouts and choose one. And I like this thick wooden one, but I want to change the color a bit. So I'm taking some chalk paint and this is the plaster color. And I'm just going to start off by lightly adding a little bit on the brush and then tapping it off and then adding it to the butterfly. I found it much easier to add more than to take it off. So I always start with a lighter layer and then build up the layers until I get it the way that I like it. And I like the way this looks. So I'm going to add some hot glue on the back and then I'm going to place it down just kind of, you know, like it's flying over the flowers to make this project. I think it's cute. Now we're going to move on to a little coordinating floral arrangement. I'm going to take some hot glue. You can use this on your cooler temperature. I don't know what was going on with my glue stick. It looks terrible, but it was still working, still working. Okay, so I'm going to place it down in there and just hold it for a second to make sure that it's stick down to my glass. And I'm going to show you how to make some clips to hold your vines down. Just cut a piece of your floral picks, whatever you have left over and Bend it right in half, it's perfect. Now this vine, I'm just measuring to see how much I need. It actually has a thin wire in it, so I'm using that first piece of wire to stick it down into that bowl. I'm going around the edges of the bowl, or the vessel, container, vase, whatever you wanna call this, and you can use whatever you have. And I'm just going to lay it down to get an idea of how I want it to be. And because mine has a little bit of wiring in it, I can move around the picks just a little bit, or the leaves just a little bit. Now these will perfectly hold these onto that ball, so I don't have to use a bunch of glue and risk burning myself. So now I'm going to go over to my little pansies. I'm going to push my greenery upward, so the leaves are going to go upward. And then I'm going to begin to clip these off. I'm going to use this whole bundle. If you like more, then you can definitely do your own thing. See here? That's easy. That's all you have to do. And I always have these pieces left over, so I like to save one here and there because I can always use them again and save even more money. And you know that's what we're about on this channel. I got something special to show y'all in a little bit too, so stay tuned. Okay, so now I'm going to start adding these beautiful yellow flowers, and these are Gerber daisies, I believe, and I'm just going to add one to the top, and then I'm going to add three on the sides. Now, the one that you place on the top is going to determine the height, and I want this to be somewhat of a round uh, arrangement. I want it to be short and round. It's very pretty this way. I think it's springy, and it makes that little container that looks like an egg look even more so like an egg, which is perfect for Easter, right? So I'm just going to add these in here and there. This arrangement makes me very happy. The colors in here are happy and bright and cheerful, and I think that's important in the springtime. You know, get these pretty things in your home, get you some pretty scents in your home, some candles that have a light and 
floral scent, maybe a fruity scent. It just uplifts your spirit and your mood. And it's just, I don't know, it's good for my soul, I think. So you can see how I've added these. And then I'm gonna always look from side to side and around, and which is what I'm doing here. I've got a few extras, and I'm gonna look and see what needs to be adjusted and where I might could add these extra picks. So there's a little spot here that could use something extra. And then another little spot here. And I think that that is just a precious look. What do you think? On to the next project. We're gonna use a Dollar Tree wheel wreath frame. I'm going to use some ivy and some forsythia vine. My ivy and vine, they, are, um, they were thrifted, but you can get something similar to it anywhere you do your shopping. All right, so I'm gonna start by just wrapping this around. You know how ivy grows. It just grows up and around. It wraps out and around any little thing it can get attached to. And I'm just gonna go in between the spokes back and forth with this vine. We're gonna do something different with the forsythia, but you'll see that in a minute. So I'm gonna keep going around here, around and around. If you can't find something similar to this at Dollar Tree, um, this ivy, you can definitely find this and get it on uh, a sale week at Hobby Lobby. And probably in the wedding section, you could get this too. All right, and this is just another piece. It's a different one, but I'm gonna mix them together anyway. You can see that it's darker, a little bit bigger. I'm just gonna put that kind of off to the side and then wind it around on the inside with the other one. It makes it look like it's intentional. You know, sometimes when foliage uh, first comes out of the ground, it turns out that it looks a little bit lighter than it actually does as it ages a bit and grows a bit. It gets a little deeper and darker. So we're gonna go with it. We're going to go with it. Now this is kind of a cottagey look and that's what I intended for this video to be. So I'm gonna play around with it. I'm gonna make it look like something that may be growing in an English garden somewhere. I'm gonna give it a little bit of freedom to do as it will and then I'll be wrapping it around so it doesn't fall off. You can use um, ties, wires, anything that you want to hold it down, to further hold it down, but I found that with this, it stays right where it needs to be. I guess it depends if you have a wired stem or if you have plastic in your stem. All right, so now we're going to layer the forsythia right on top of it. At first, when I got this, I thought, you know, that looks like jasmine, and it really does. Jasmine and forsythia, are they similar? Are they the same thing? I don't know. All right, so now I'm just going to start by kind of wrapping this end around. You won't be able to see that loop. And then rather than wrapping this around and around, because I don't want it to be thick, I want it to lay flat on whatever surface, I'm going to put the forsythia just on the top. You can see here that I'm winding it down in the ivy a bit, and then I'm going to use whatever types of ties or wires that I have. This particular little tie here was one that was actually holding that forsythia to the tag. So I'm using it again. I'm recycling it. You can use white, you can use black, you can use whatever color that you like. Now my wheel there, my bicycle wheel, was actually black and I spray painted it white. So I've used it several different times and several different arrangements. It's also been copper before. So, you know, you can recycle your things. You can use them over and over again. So just go around here, all the way around. And you can make it as thick or thin as you like, depending on how much you have um, in your vine. This is another thing, you know, you can pick up these vines at um, Dollar General, Dollar Tree, any craft stores. Just watch your sales. Lots of stores have sales. And if you want to save your money and stretch it a little bit further, maybe you don't have a good thrift store, then just be sure that you watch your sale cycles in your craft stores. And you can often get things at 50% off and you can buy off season and put it back for next year if you've got space to store it. So you can see here, I've just used floral wire this time and I'm attaching it down to the ivy and the spokes underneath or the wire underneath. 
Now I don't want mine to be any thicker than it is, so I'm just going to cut it off here when we get back to the front. You can see this little loop is where we started, and I'm going to just loop it right through there. And you won't even be able to see it once I move my ivy around. It's such a simple little wreath, but to me it makes a, a nice impact. You got the bright yellow and the beautiful rich greens. It just looks like spring to me. So now I'm going to move all of these around and make sure that I'm not looking at the plastic backs of anything. I want to move everything forward as much as I can. And if you have a problem and you can't get things to lay the way they that you want them to lay, just grab a little hot glue. You see I'm gonna cover the ring here with an extra leaf. And I'm gonna use a little bit of hot glue to put another piece right over where I've got too much of this wheel showing through. Simple, doesn't take a lot of hot glue and then it'll peel off easily when you get ready to use this for something else. So once I get it the way I like it, I'm going to embellish it. This is a sign that I got from Dollar Tree. This wasn't in the spring though, it was over in the home decor. Um, and I have found quite a few of these in my store, so hopefully you can find these in yours. To make it stick down, I'm going to use a pipe cleaner and a piece of paper and my hot glue gun. Be careful, protect your fingers. I'm gonna flip it over once it is dried and then twist it right into the center. I like the placement of this. I'll be able to see my home sign nicely and I think that the black and the yellow and green look so pretty together. Now to cover that, just to make sure nothing scratches, if you wanna put it on the wall or your door, you can put another piece of paper on top and that'll give it a little bumper. So I don't like the way this looks. It's not glued on there right. You know how it is at Dollar Tree, sometimes things just, they just don't sit right. So I'm just gonna pull it off and I'm gonna reshape it and then place it back down. And to me that made such a difference, such a difference. Whoops. Okay. Now that it's nice and full and pretty and shaped more like an O, I'm gonna embellish it. I just decided that maybe I would add a couple of more of those pretty little flowers right down on top of it. What do you think? Would you have left it alone? Or do you like it like this? Can y'all believe we have 11,000 subscribers in our, on our YouTube family? We do, 11,000, almost 11,800. So that's very exciting. I love to see that people are enjoying what I'm doing, that I'm inspiring people. I love it. And if you have not subscribed and you're a viewer, I wish you would. I really wish you would consider it. I'm always going to do my best to bring you unique pieces. I'm not copycatting. Um, I'm gonna try to bring you thrift flips and Dollar Tree and discount DIYs. We're gonna recycle things. Yeah, I'd love to have you as part of the YouTube family. Now I'm just gonna add some of that ivy because I think that gives it a little extra oomph. What do you think? Yep, I like it like that. This is so simple. And you don't have to put any type of hanger on there. You can just hang it right from the frame, which I love. I hope you do this one. So here are our three creations together. These are my cottage spring creations. They were inspired by the pansies that I found at Dollar Tree. I hope you try these because I believe in you and I know that you can do it and I bet yours are going to be just as wonderful. And the best part is they'll be exactly how you like them. Don't doubt your abilities. You can do it. What you do is good enough. You are good enough. I've got a variety of birdhouses. I found this one at the thrift store. Love it. I got this one at Dollar Tree. And they have several different styles, and this one was thrifted as well. We're gonna start off with the one with the metal top, and I wanna cover that because I thought these little pieces of wood chips look very much like shingles. So I'm gonna try my hand at doing shingles. I have three inches here, so I'm just gonna divide this into three sections. Just marking it off with my ruler and then gonna turn my ruler to the side so I can make lines to make it easier to guide where I'm gluing down my little shingles. 
All right, so I'm just gonna use hot glue, but if you want this to be permanent or to put it outside, you're gonna need to use a different type of glue. Maybe something like E6000 would be good. All right, so I'm just gonna show you how I do this. These shingles are not gonna fit exactly across the bottom, so I'm gonna have to adjust it a little bit, but that is so easily done. They are so very thin that they just split when you press down on them. So I'm holding it from the underneath side and pressing down on the edge of that little um, tin there, and it just snaps right off the perfect measurement. How about that? You could also use popsicle sticks and cut those down if you wanted to, if you had some of the thin ones, and make shingles of your own. Now I'm gonna go up to the next line. I'm gonna go right under that line because I wanna make sure that my shingle overlaps about probably an eighth of an inch over the bottom line. And I'm just gonna alternate back and forth so that I have the broken shingle on opposite sides. So then I'm gonna glue that one down and continue along. Going on the top row, I want to make sure that that top row sticks up just a little bit over the peak and then I'm gonna start on the other side. Now I use baby wipes with my antiquing wax just to give it more of a, um, I like to use this to distress. So I'm gonna use just a downward stroke here and just press that onto the wood and then drag it down. I'm gonna do it on both sides and then continue to blend it and push it around until it is the, the color and texture that I like. It looks old, it looks like it's been outside, and it looks weathered, and I like that. I love rustic, cottagey, weathered looks. And I think that I accomplished that with this. What do you think? All right, so now I'm gonna embellish it. My cord came from uh, Amazon, but you can get some now at Dollar Tree. I was so surprised. It's in the, like, the little floral or garden type section, so hopefully you can find some at your store. I think they come in a three pack. Um, different types of these little cordings or trims, whatever you want to call it. And I'm just going to trim off here and there where I think it would look good. I didn't want to paint it because I really like the wood that is used on this birdhouse. I like the variation in the light and the dark, and you can see all the rings and lines. I think that's pretty. So there's one piece, and then I looked at it, of course, from all angles, and I'm going to add some on the bottom and around the sides of the birdhouse. Be careful and make sure you protect your fingers. You can get those little finger protector, little silicone tips at Dollar Tree if you're lucky. I have seen them there every time I've gone. So fortunately my store stays in stock and they really do make a difference. But I got in a hurry and I didn't use them today. All right, so I'm gonna go all the way around and then tack it down in the back, trim off what we don't need. And this is how it looks so far. You could of course leave it just like this if you like it. But I noticed that there's just a tad of a gap, of course, between my shingles and the tin roof that's underneath. So I decided just to use a little bit of jute and cover that gap up. Now what you could do if you have a, like the glue guns that have the little detail tip on them, that would be perfect for this situation. But I don't have that, so I did the best I could with my glue gun, which I've always had you know, pretty good luck with. And I got a neat finish, Decide, besides the fact that that's a really big gun, it does give me a nice little finish. Trim it off on the edges where it's even, and then this is how it's gonna look. I'm cutting off my fuzzies. Some people use a lighter to kind of burn that off. If you feel inclined, you can do that. So these cute little patches, or I don't know, what are these? I don't know what they are, but they're they're made of thread. I'm gonna use this little bird here to go right over, like he's sitting out there, peeking in his house. This is so cute. I've been waiting to use these little, little bird patches for a long time, and I think it's a perfect way to use it right here. He looks like he belongs there. What do you think? I like it. This is my big birdhouse. And I mean it is big. I decided to clean it up by wiping it down and then just sanding off the top of it and then all around the sides and the bottom, just giving it a light sanding so that my stain will be even when I put it on. 
I've got some, this is like a, a wood stain and it is something that I got from Plaid. I am a Plaid ambassador and it is in the color gray. They do have a dark one too that's like a brown, but I wanted to use the gray here. Don't be disturbed by the color when you put it on because it's not gonna stay this way. The longer you leave it on, the darker it will be. But I wanted mine to be more of just a wash. So I'm just gonna take a baby wipe, which is fairly dry, and I'm gonna wash the rest of it off. It gives a very subtle gray color or gray tint to the wood. And I like that. I like that here because I think it's going to be really good for the technique that we're going to use. This is the most detailed of the three, but I don't want you to be discouraged by the work that goes into it because believe me, the results are going to be so worth it. All right. And if you don't have a good thrift store and you don't have a place where you can find, you know, birdhouses, then if you want to buy something new or use something you already have in your yard, take it down, sand it, and give it a little facelift. So I'm taking a stencil brush here, which has very stiff little bristles, and I'm just dipping straight into that antiquing wax. This is not watered down. I went straight into it because I want this to be very rich and dark. So that's what I'm doing, and I'm just kind of stippling it down in all those cracks because it gives it a little more depth. It makes the recessed parts actually look like they're deeper than they are. And I like the detail of this. For some reason, it has given me some serious mushroom cap vibes. I like that. Do you see how it got kind of, um, when I was doing it, it got little splatters. So I said, you know what? That's a little happy mistake that Bob Ross talks about. I'm gonna go with it. So I'm just taking a watered down version of my wax and just kind of raking my finger across those stiff bristles and splattered paint all around it. And I love the look of this. I'm gonna fix my little bird perch. Just, I wiped it down, I had a little mess there. Just wiped it off the baby wipe, it came off nicely. And then fixed it back. Put some more color back onto it exactly where I wanted it to be. And then just continued to go around here, flicking that paint all over the place. I'm redoing the bottom, and I do have a little bit of a mess along the bottom. My lines are not perfectly straight, but I'm okay with that, and I encourage you to be okay with that too, because this is a rustic look, and it really makes this birdhouse look so different than how I started. That's the great thing about crafting. There's no right or wrong, right? You just do what makes you happy and brings you joy, and I always encourage uh, my viewers and subscribers to keep that in mind when you're crafting. All right, so these stickers came from Dollar Tree. They have a bunch of these kinds. They're kind of um, different styles, but they're raised. And I really, I really enjoy the look of this. And it fits perfectly around the little opening to the birdhouse. Is that not the cutest little cottage core birdhouse you've ever seen? But wait, it gets better. I'm going to take these little corner pieces and just kind of Give it a little extra something. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I think this is really cute. And there's four, so it works great. I'm just gonna use a popsicle stick so I can line it up and kind of get it, you know, not perfectly straight, but pretty straight. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this side, and then so it's kind of framed out. The front of the house is framed out, and I like that. But you don't have to do it. You know, whatever you like. And there are ones that have keys on them and all kinds of stuff. So just be creative and and do what feels right to you. Oh, isn't it a beauty? And then I thought, you know what? What would make this even more perfect is to give it a stand. Yeah, I'm going to give it a stand. So check out this candelabra or candle stand or whatever you want to call it. Apparently it had a glass top or something on there. But anyway, I got it at Goodwill because it was broken. Apparently nobody else wanted it and I grabbed it. I'm getting it a good cleaning with a fresh baby wipe, and then um, I'll show you. It's actually from Ikea. Is that not the coolest thing? Yeah. I'm just gonna take the top of this fat, tall base, and I'm going to attach it to the bottom of my birdhouse. And there's no wax on the bottom of the birdhouse because if you would have done that, um, it wouldn't stick very good, very good at all. So I'm just gonna hold it down until it gives it a minute to catch. 
oh easy this is probably the easiest one but it you know it does have a little little something to it little technique little effort so I'm taking that same watered down antiquing wax and my brush and I'm just gonna go over the roof I'm gonna give this a brown top you don't have to do this you can paint yours you could use the solid wax technique like I used on the last birdhouse you could even shingle this like we did on the first birdhouse so see I'm having a hard time here with that wax so let me show you what I do here in a minute to get that trim nice and colored without flicking that paint all over the rest of my birdhouse because we won't be staining that we're gonna be painting it and I don't want to make a mess waxy substances do not like to stick to paint so substances so I'm just gonna take it on my finger and just rub it down into those little cracks what about that or finger painting y'all finger painting and it does the trick it does perfectly I'm going around all the edges of that raw wood there to make sure that it's all covered up and then the underneath part we're just going to use paint for that so I'm taking this light mocha use whatever color you like and three sides of this house and the underneath parts of the roof are all going to be covered with this mocha paint hey if you enjoy budget-friendly DIYs I would love it if you would subscribe to this channel if you are from Devin's channel, I want to say a big welcome and thank you for coming over. I have known Devin for quite some time now on YouTube and on Instagram. And that's a hardworking girl right there. She has unique DIYs and she's such a spiritual person. It's really uplifting to talk to her and follow her journey. So just be sure that as soon as you finish watching mine, you go over there and check her out. Okay. Here are some rub-ons that I got from Dollar Tree. They also have a variety of really cute stuff depending on what style you like. And I know that I'm going to be using this, this transfer. I've used it on other projects and I will be using it again. I just kind of get an idea of which section I want to use. And the reason we painted that front part white is because I really want this to stand out. So I like the rose one, the rose section, and I'm going to be working with it. I'm just making sure that I have enough room here to put it on and then I'm going to take my little cutters here and just cut the little stem off. So the little part where they stand or the perch, I just removed it so that I could lay this straight down. But don't worry, we're going to put the perch back. We don't want the bird to be confused and not be able to get into its home. All right, I'm using just a regular popsicle stick to rub this down. Don't worry if you did like I just did and pressed it down and made it kind of messy because you can fix it so easily with these stamps or these um, rub-ons. You can't take it off once it gets on there, in my experience anyway, but you can certainly fix it. So what's left on there are a couple of extra leaves and things that didn't transfer. Just overlap wherever you need um, a piece. And look at that, I totally covered up my mistake there. I'm gonna take an awl and just dig down in here and make it flat, clean it up nicely. And decide what kind of perch I want to use so I thought you know what a little button and a bead would be perfect here I've glued down the button and now I'm just gluing the little it's kind of an oval shape oblong you see there right down in the middle of the button and how cute is that I think that is precious I'm gonna take my little heat gun here and it came from Arteza if anyone is curious I love it and I'm going to peel off my sticker. Oh my gosh, game changer, changer for sure because it saves me a ton of time not having to scrape. This is just a little piece of stuff that I found at Goodwill and I save these because you never know when you might need a base or an extra piece for something, you know? And it's gonna be perfect as a base for this and it's gonna be a little razor or a riser and it's just gonna lift it up and look at that, it's perfect. Here are our three birdhouses. I'd love it if you would give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And I would love to know if you have any intentions of making any of these little birdhouses. Which one's your favorite? Which one do you think that you will try to make? They're easy. You know, with summer and spring here and coming up, it's a perfect time to get in your yard, to get on your porch. You know, if it's still snowy where you live, bring some of these things to life in your house. Get inspired 
be warmed We're up. We're going to start off with two of these little rainbow Dollar Tree signs. I found these in the regular home decor section. So they weren't Valentine's. You could probably still find them. We're going to take off the strings and the tags from the back. Then we're going to fill in the holes and I'm just using some of this spackle that came from the Dollar Tree to go in each one and then I'm just going to use my little scraper tool to make sure it's nice and flat for when we paint. After it dries, I'm going to add some chalk paint. You could probably use acrylic paint here if you wanted to, but I just like that I get the texture from the chalk paint and I know that it is a matte finish and the other paint is going to take well, I think, to the sign now. So I'm going to go over both signs like this, just back and forth, kind of sloppy. I've got this cool, finally, little heat gun and this one came from Arteza. I'll put the links below for you if you're interested. Love it. It made drying this paint so much faster. And you know chalk paint pretty much dries pretty quickly anyway, but this really made these projects go along a lot faster. So the second coat I'm going to put on one of these, I'm going to kind of go, you can see here, I'm going to go at an angle and just follow all the way around. I thought for the texture of a lemon, this would be perfect, just in case it shows up through my paint. You're going to need two different colors of yellow, one darker than the other, and white. I've just got some little wood chips here that are going to be our seeds, and I've got some greenery and some ribbon. So we're going to start with the lemon slice. I've just pulled up a picture that looks like a lemon on Pinterest to give me a little bit of inspiration and direction. I'm going to take a pencil and I have sped this up for you, but you do need to see the process, so I went ahead and left it in for you. We're going to start off with the rind of the lemon, so I'm just kind of sketching that in. If you mess up on your lines and what you're drawing, you can use one of those big pink erasers and it'll take it off without smearing it from my experience anyway. So now we're gonna do the little sections here of the lemon. And in between the sections, there is a white area, or maybe it's called pith, I'm not sure. But we're gonna leave the white area there, and these are gonna be the little divisions of the lemon. So you can see here, I've erased and made some mistakes and fixed it, and you know, you can do that too, it's no big deal. I thought it would have helped me to draw it in before I painted, and I'm very glad that I did now. So I'm just going to take a wide, flat brush and start adding on my lighter yellow. We're going to save the darker yellow to go on the outside. You can get paints at Dollar Tree. You can get paints at Walmart for 50 cents. Um, the Apple Barrel, I think, is around 50 cents. Don't quote me on that, but you know you can get these pretty inexpensively. I'm not sure of the quality of the paint there at Dollar Tree, so just buyer beware. I'm also going to go around the edge of the sign with that yellow just to carry the color over. And just so you can see, this is sped up to four times. So really take your time here and it's going to be worth it. Believe me, it's going to be worth it. And you'll look back at your handiwork and think, wow, I did that. You got to be proud of yourself. This is my first time doing something like this. So I think I'm happy with the results. Um, you can let me know once we get to that point in our end screen and let me know what you think. So I'm going to continue around. Keep in mind um, that these little sections are kind of rounded on the edges, so they're not a perfect triangle. You don't have to make them perfect triangles. All right, I'm going to take the more golden yellow and start to put in my rind. You need to dry your paint in between so you don't smear if you bump it with your hand. Make sure everything's dry. And certainly if you don't have a blow dryer or a heat gun to dry with, you can use a fan or you can just leave it, walk away, take a coffee break and come back. So you can see here, I got over my lines. I made kind of a mess. It's kind of smeary. Don't worry, we're gonna fix it. But be sure that the paint is dry first. I cannot tell you enough. It's got to be dry or it will blend the colors. So I'm gonna take a narrow brush here and just go right in between. Now you see how that just brings that right back it brings that white right back in there. By no means is it perfect, but I'm trying my best to cover up my pencil marks because I don't want those in there. If you like that look though, you can certainly take a marker or a Sharpie or something and go back over and put your black lines in. I mean, that would be nice too. 
and then see on this part you can see there this my line is not perfect but you know if you look at a lemon it's not perfect either go ahead and just round off the white around the yellow and it will make it look like you did a perfect job painting look at that it almost erases your mistakes look how crisp that is with all the white now and the different yellows I think this looks like a lemon what do you think not bad huh so just continue along here and then I'm gonna dry I don't want to bump anything and mess anything up so these little pieces came in a bag that I got at Goodwill and was just a bunch of little craft scraps and stuff and I thought these would be the perfect look when you cut a lemon you know you cut you cut through the seed and you get that kind of a woody look this is what it looks like to me and look that just adds a little more texture and a little more interest to the lemon you don't have to use this if you don't want you could paint it in or you could just not put anything on there if you'd like but I like lemon in my water, I like lemon in my tea, so I'm kind of familiar with what a lemon looks like. And I think this is pretty good. Okay, so now we're going to deal with this little cutout section in the top. I've got some greenery here. I thought that some little yellow and white flowers would be pretty. These are all scraps from other things that I've used. I've just pulled them off because I like to recycle my things and repurpose them. And I'm just going to start laying them down. You can just see my process. Um, I don't do everything perfectly. I can edit out things, but I want to show you my thought process so that you also can know that you're not going to do everything perfect the first time. Okay, so my stems are short. So what are we going to do here? If I try to attach it in the middle with my zip tie, everything's going to fall out, right? Okay, well, what you can do is use two zip ties. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use one on one side, one on the other side, and then leave myself the perfect little space for my bow. No big deal. We can work it out, can't we? You can also use wire if you need to, or, you know, twist ties or pipe cleaners, whatever you got. So I'm going to take seven inch pieces here of a thrifted and a Dollar Tree ribbon, and I'm going to make four of each one. Snippy snip. Nice sharp scissors make so much of a difference. I also get my scissors from Arteza if you want to check that out. All right, now I've got some Dollar Tree ribbon here. This is wired burlap. I'm going to cut it down at the same length. And this is going to be the base. I thought this would really look good considering that we have the little sliced seeds on the lemon. So I thought this would be a nice way to bring in a little more of that earthy color that I love so much. So I'm just going to cut dovetails in those two bigger ones, and I'm not going to cut any anything on the uh, thinner ribbons. You can cut those at a slant. You can dovetail them if you're just really feeling, you know, if you've got some good small scissors and you want to do that, then you just go right ahead and do it. But for me, this was fine. You don't have to do this in any particular order. This is a messy bow. You're just going to crisscross it over on itself, put them back and forth, and then tie them off in the middle. It's a cute little messy bow i think that the little colors look nice together and they look lemony i like the yellow and white and the little lace ribbon there it's got the lace on the top and the silk ribbon underneath almost looks like the shape of little lemons doesn't it the little cutouts i think it's cute you can use any colors that you like any textures that you like you can use all burlap if you're just going for that farmhouse look but i've really been enjoying a more cottagey feminine feel lately so I'm kind of adding those into my home okay so now I've got to do something to attach this on the back I've used some hot glue to go straight down and across on the back just to give me a little something I'm using these clips just to hold it in place until my glue is set up and by the way when you paint those boards they will bow up a little bit because that's not wood it's like a paper but don't be concerned about that. It's just going to give it a little more dimension. And it'll look nice when it's hanging off of your wall or your door. Okay, so fluff it all out the way you like it. And I decided I wanted to cover up that little jute in the middle. So I'm just going to wrap another piece of that yellow and white ribbon that I love so much. And I'm just going to tie it in a double knot here. It'll make it a little more secure also. 
we've got lots of things going on in the middle of this, don't we? Trim off the extras. We want it to look nice and expensive. And then you're just going to use the little bars that are in the back, the little cross beams or whatever I have going on there, and just tie the little um, swag to that. And then I wanted to add just a little bit more, as I often do when I make swags. So I'm going to push this up through where it's tied, right there. And I can still see this, so I'm just going to clip it off. These little popsicle sticks will clip very easily. And I'm going to add one more yellow flower right there. What do you think? If you enjoy it, please give me a thumbs up. Now, on to the watermelon slice. This one's much easier. So we're gonna take some red, and I think this is bright red, but you use whatever color you like. I chose this because it has, um, it's more like of a true red, I guess. Uh, it doesn't have any berry tones to it. So it looks like a watermelon to me. The watermelons that are accessible in Alabama where I live. So I'm just gonna go around and do uh, like a big semicircle of red. This is going to be the meat of the watermelon. Now, if you like yours to be wider than that, certainly go ahead and make it wider than that. I end up with a pretty thick rind, but I don't mind. You just use this as inspiration. All right, now we're gonna take two different color greens here. I have a grass green and a crisp green. I do change up my outer color, um, which you will see shortly. But for now, let's just talk about this inside of the rind. Okay, sometimes when you get a watermelon, it's a whitish pink color. Sometimes it's a yellowish green color. Whatever color is better for you, then you put that there. I'm going to show you a tip about your paint and why you need to let it dry first. Look, I went back over it and look what it did. It lifted my paint up. So be sure that you don't overlap. I was trying to get a nice straight line here or a crisp line but all you have to do to achieve that is to let it dry and then paint one more coat over the top you don't want to lift your paint so this paint you can see this green was not dark enough compared to that lighter green it was very misleading uh, on the bottle so I did go back over this I, I went ahead and finished this coat thinking it might dry darker but it didn't and then I let this coat dry and I went back over it with another green, and I'm sorry I can't remember what color it was, but it was a darker green, and I made that the outside of my rind. Now I'm taking some black, and I'm just using a little teardrop-shaped brush here, and I'm making seeds. We're going to have seeds in our watermelon, but you can have a seedless watermelon if you like. Do this however you want to do it. You can also use a Sharpie or a paint marker to draw these in if you would rather do that. I'm not looking for perfection. We wouldn't actually have a watermelon hanging off the door anyway. So, you know, this is the artistic view here. Take your own license. All right, 18 inches here. We're going to cut down some ribbons. I have thrifted ribbon, which is the two darker ribbons here. The red one, or the two wider ones, excuse me. The red one does not have any wire in it. Neither does this black and white, and neither does the white and black. The only wired one is the plaid that is underneath. So you're going to cut slants in your thinner ribbons and dovetails in the thicker ribbons. And then I'm just going to start off by making a very easy bow. You can see this is simple. Then I'm going to do the same thing here. If you are using a ribbon that does not have wire, you want to keep your bows reasonably small or else they won't stand up and they get really floppy. Of course, if floppy is your look, then that's fine. Now this is me deciding, do I want the checked in the back or the red in the back? All right, we're gonna do the same process with the other bows, making each bow a little bit smaller than the one before it. So our black and white little dots on top are gonna be the smallest loops. I'm gonna use a pipe cleaner, I mean a zip tie, excuse me, and go around here and zip it off and then clip off the edge and then fluff it around. Let's pull these down how you like them. Fix your bows however you like it the best. You know, I like to fluff a lot. All right, so I wanted 
this watermelon to have some realistic looking leaves. Now watermelon leaves not exactly like this, but I did look it up and the vines are very similar to what we see here. So I decided to break these apart and let's see, do I want three? Nah, we'll do two. And I'm going to make another crossbar on the back because we have a gap. We've got to have something to attach the bow to. So I'm just this time decided to just use it going across once instead of two of them. And I'm going to add the greenery two on this side, two on this side, and then I want to add there I am fluffing again. I want to add two more here. Because as I said before, my swags often start off with just stuff to the sides and then I end up putting something in the middle. So I went ahead and did it here and I wrapped a piece of ribbon around the zip tie and now I'm going to attach it down to the leaves and that little piece of popsicle stick in the back. You can go ahead at this point and trim off anything extra. This is what I love about the ribbons. You can leave them long and then you can decide later how you want them. And then it'll be perfect just the way you like it. I like this. It just screams summertime to me. Let's make a hanger. So I'm going to cut one pipe cleaner in half. I'm going to do the same process to both of these little signs. I'm just going to twist it around here, loop it, twist it around, and you hang it from the loop. So here's our watermelon slice. I like my watermelon slice. It's so cute. I think I'm going to use this to help decorate for a 4th of July when that comes up. Be sure you subscribe if you're into budget-friendly DIYs and crafting. On to the next, and this is our lemon slice, which would be absolutely perfect any time of year. I believe in you. I think you need to hear something positive every single day, and it is true. I do believe in you, and I know that you can do these. I'm going to start off by making my own design. So I've gone to Canva. I do have a free account there. I'll have it linked below for you. I'm going to go to Wall Calendar just because it's the size of a piece of paper. So we start off with this white box. If you go to Elements, you can type in whatever you like. I'm going to put in watercolor, and I'm going to pick this really pretty teal here, and I'm just going to shrink it down a little. I don't want it to be full size. Then I'm going to put turtle, and then go down and find turtles. I like this one. I think it looks good with that watercolor background. Then I'm going to go to text on the side, add a heading, and I'm going to change my font to Anton. So you can see here, it's Anton. I'm going to take out that and then put in Save Our Oceans. You can choose whatever you like here. That's the beauty of making your own designs. So I'm going to go to Effects, Splice. I'm going to remove the offset. And then over here, I'm going to change that inside color to white. That's going to show up so much better. So this is what it looks like, and we're going to save it and send it to an editor where we can reverse our image. It's got to be backwards. So here we go. Then we're going to save it, and we're going to print it. So I'm going to make sure I choose the correct printer. I have three, so I'm going to choose my Epson. It's the one that I converted especially for sublimation. I've got that video linked for you. I'm going to choose the type of paper that I'm using, and then I'm going to print. So I am working with Hippo today. I have worked with them before, and I have two videos about sublimation before this. I have their sublimation paper and the ink. I converted a printer, an Epson printer. I absolutely love these products. I believe in these products. So here you can see, I'm waiting for it to print out. I did speed this up. It does take just a minute for it to come out, but I've sped it up. And look at the beautiful color. Now what you might notice is it looks like dark blue. The color changes once you press it. So for me, I wasn't sure because I didn't remove the background. I didn't want there to be like a gray cast or frame around it. So here it is all trimmed out. It doesn't have to be perfect. I just want to make sure that I don't have too much in case there's a gray box. You're going to need heat resistant tape to hold your product or your paper in place. 
And this is the shirt that I've chose to use. I chose it because it is polyester. You need at least 70 or 75% polyester to get a good chemical reaction. This is 95% polyester, and I love the, the color of this shirt. It looks like watercolor too, right? So I'm gonna take my butcher paper and put it down over my surface. I'm gonna pull my shirt over the machine so that I only have the top part of it on the thing, and I've got it where it is lined up between the seams so it's nice and straight. I'm going to make sure that this is in the correct position and then tape it down. You do not want this to move because what will happen is called ghosting and you'll have like blurriness in your picture and you don't want that to happen. So using some type of heat resistant tape is gonna be your best friend. Preheat your machine, whatever you're using and get ready to set it. I've also put another piece of butcher paper on top. After it is done, you can carefully remove that outer paper and I've let mine cool just a minute because it's super hot. And then you can just begin to remove your tape. You can see that right through the paper now and you really couldn't see it before. That's when you know it's done. Now, do you see that beautiful green? It looked blue, didn't it? It changes when you get it on the paper. It's really stunning. Look at this. It's so beautiful. Every detail and that watercolor turned out perfectly. This is why I love Hippo products. They really back up what they what they advertise. I just, I love it. I have not had a fail yet with their products. I heard this could be done, that you could use some type of acrylic on wood or on other products and make it work. So I thought this is the perfect opportunity to try it so that if I fail or I succeed, then you can follow me or not. So here it is, three coats dried outside. I let them dry overnight, I sprayed them you know, three times let them dry in between. Now I'm just choosing which one I want. And I've chosen the print that I like. And this one does have kind of a grayish background behind it. I'm flipping it over. There's no words, so I didn't necessarily have to reverse it. I'm just going to measure and make sure that I'm fairly centered here. And it looks like I am. And then when you have it where you want it, Go ahead and get that tape out again and tape it in place. Y'all, the struggle with tape is real. It doesn't matter what kind it is. I always have this struggle. But I just use my fingernail till I feel the edge of it and I can pull it up just like that. All right. So then you're going to cut off your pieces. You don't need a lot of it. You just need enough to put it down and hold it without any slipping. So that's what I'm going to do here. And I was really nervous about doing this. I'm gonna tell you the truth. I was nervous about trying this with this acrylic because I thought, well, you know, what if I burn it? I just, I was worried. But look, we're gonna do the best that we can. And I'm just gonna fold my paper over on top of it now, like I did before. I'm gonna take my mini press for this. And I'm just gonna go to work on it. You can see my hesitation. I was nervous. So I'm gonna put this down here. You're gonna put it down for the whatever amount of time that is required for whatever type of um, base that you're using. I've done mine and then I'm gonna pull it off. Now notice this. You see how, okay, my print has set and that's good, but you see how it's sticking I saw another person do this, and I can't remember the name, so I do apologize. Um, you can let me know if you've seen my video and you know what I'm talking about. But the paper comes off with a damp rag so easily. It just wipes right away. No stickiness, there's no lifting. The color is, with sublimation, it is a chemical process. It is bonded with that material. You cannot wipe it or rub it off. Look at that. Oh my gosh, the beautiful purples. It looks so vintage and pretty to me. So I've decided I'm gonna go ahead and make this into a craft project that you can try. Maybe you're doing sublimation, but you don't exactly know what to do once you get these projects done. Well, I wanna make this look vintage. It already had that feel to me because of the wood color in the background. So I'm just taking some white wax and adding to it all around the edges, kind of maybe trying to blend out the darker spots where 
that line is showing underneath. And by the way, that's not a sublimation issue. That's because of the type, I just printed out a regular photograph, like a regular picture that I found on Pinterest, and it had a gray background. I could have done like I did with the turtle and gone in and just cut around it so there wouldn't be the shadow and the edge, but I'm gonna fix it where you can't even really tell. So this is how it looks with the white wax, and it does kind of fade it out or give it like a, you know, a faded look on the edges. But I'm gonna now take the darker wax and I'm gonna add that onto all of these little scrolly areas. And by the way, I did break one of the corners off, but I fixed that too. We can always work with it, we don't give up, right? Okay, so I'm just going over all of these corners and I'm trying to get down in those cracks as well because I wanna give it, again, an aged look. And it gives it more dimension other than just, you know, being a flat piece. So you're gonna continue around just like this. I'm also gonna go over my edges with that, all around the trim. A piece like this could certainly be used for Easter. It could be used for spring. I know that when I thrift, I find little wood pieces and little things like this all the time. You can certainly also get these at Dollar Tree if that is something that you are interested in. I know I've seen wood pieces there. You could maybe try this on a scrap piece of wood, maybe from a project that you've done previously, or maybe you find it on the side of the road. Um, you could find construction sites everywhere. People who are doing little DIYs of their own and they just throw a bunch of stuff out or put it on the side of the road. Now, what do you think? Isn't this precious? It looks so vintage to me. I really like this. And you can see that I broke the top corner on the left, but I'll fix it. It's only a little bit. All right, I have got some old ribbon here that I got at the thrift store. And we're gonna make a little hanging sign out of this. Very simple project, y'all. I'm going to just cut those little ends on a slant. I don't want them to fray. And then just using the holes that are already there, I'm gonna feed my um, ribbon through there. It's a thin ribbon, but you could use jute. Maybe you do a different type of project or you like a different style. I'm adding more cottage into my home, so I think that this is a very fitting little picture and little hanging sign, and this beautiful satin ribbon just works perfect. Now this is delicate. As I said, I broke a piece of it, so I'm just trying to keep that in mind while I tie this off so that I don't break it again. And I'm just gonna tie just a simple little tie here. Pull that string down in the back. I'm not even gonna cut it off because I think it looks nice just like that. And then when you flip it over, you have a beautiful little hanging sign. If you wanted to add some little greenery or something to this, you could. I'm just gonna add another little simple shoestring bow. This is how we make it. Oh, my hands are a mess. Look at all that wax on my hands. Okay, so that's an easy bow, right? Simple, simple to make. And just pull it down, make those little loops as long as you want. I wanna kinda of flatten it in the middle, make sure I got the right side up. And I'm gonna put it right there where I broke it. And I'm just gonna mask it. You won't even be able to tell. Add a little glue, you can use hot glue or whatever you have, but this is what I had. So I'm just gonna put this on here, making sure I put the right side down, let it dry. I'm going to use one of these microfiber washcloths from the Dollar Tree. You can see they come in a four pack, so you're really stretching your dollar, and these are 100% polyester. I've done another little printout here on that paper, on that special paper. I'm gonna cut off my tag, of course, and then you can go ahead and place down on your mat your project. And I'm going to be cutting this out because it is lined. I don't want the box in my picture, so I'm gonna to cut to the inside of those lines. Then I won't have any problem. And because I printed this off as a free sublimation print, I also don't have to worry about any type of a weird gray background, which is great because this is a white item. So the color ideally should be perfect because it's white, so it's the lightest color possible and they do recommend white and the very light colors. And because it's 100% polyester. So let's see what we can do with this. I've pressed it out a little bit 
I'm going to take this and put it down. I'm going to tape it off just like I did with my other projects because we don't want it to move. So just a little bit here and there to hold it in place. And I actually could have taped it to the mat if I wanted to, but I just tried to keep it right there on the edge of the fabric. All right, get it all pressed down. I'm going to cover it with my butcher paper. And then I'm going to take my little mini press and just press it down. Be sure that you use whatever directions you need to use for the type of fabric you're using. And then when the time is up, I'm going to remove that. And I'm peeking under to see what it looks like. <gasps> and y'all, look at this. Look how beautiful that black turned out on the white. That is perfect. I am going to go ahead and choose some more of these black and white prints and do them on the rest of the cloths that I have because these are gorgeous. I love this. Of all the projects I did, this is my favorite. We use microfiber towels in our house as napkins. So I've got a little recommendation for you to make this nice and pretty for Easter. You can just fold it, kind of cinch it up in the middle, take a pretty ribbon, whatever coordinates with your style and your decor. You can tie it off, make a little bow in it. And if you like, you could leave it just like that. This would also be a nice presentation in the bathroom. You can flip it over and have it beside your plate looking like this, and that would be pretty. And you can also add little bits of greenery. So I'm just gonna tuck some faux baby's breath in here just to kind of accentuate it, give it that little pretty Easter look. And they're pieces I already had, so they were free. You can't beat free, right? I love this. I love all three of these projects. Love them. So here's a recap. Here is the last project we did. This is going to be our napkin, but it's actually a microfiber washcloth. This is our wood that we use the acrylic spray paint on. Made a pretty little vintagey cottage sign, and my little bunny's holding it for me. And then here's our beautiful watercolor oceans t-shirt and i just really want you to believe in yourself all right so we're going to use a little bit of ribbon here i've just got some black ribbon i got from the thrift store this was also thrifted and this is just like a burlap striped ribbon i have some thrifted florals and then some fern from the dollar tree it's just called foliage on this sticker but it's a fern and then two thrifted burlap flowers. They look like roses. I'm just going to clip those all apart. The sign from Dollar Tree and a broom that I thrifted. You, I find these all the time at the thrift store so hopefully you can too. So I'm just measuring this and it looks like it's about 36 inches. You're going to need some pipe cleaners and we're going to start putting this together. So I'm going to take one pipe cleaner and put it at the top about three inches down, I guess, two and a half, three inches. I'm going to twist it off to the side, put one right underneath it or just right above it or overlapping it, doesn't matter. And I'm going to twist it and push it off to the side. We're going to get ready with our next one and measure down about five inches. Twist it off to the side. And you're going to continue this down until we get eight of these. Now, if your broom is shorter, you can use less or put them closer together, whichever way you choose. If your broom happens to be a little longer, you can do more or stretch them a bit further apart. Not too far or your poofs won't be poofs anymore. So now we're down here toward the bottom and we're gonna start with our ribbon. I'm just pinching up about an inch from the bottom of that roll and I'm going to place it tightly down in the center and twist the pipe cleaner around. It's going to hold it tightly in place. I'm just going to jump it over the end of the broom. We're jumping the broom here and measuring about, I think I have nine inches. I'll measure it for you. Yes, nine inches. So I'm just going to gather it up in my hand just like that. 
and go to the center of this pipe cleaner. Push it tightly down into the center and then give it a couple of good tight twists so that it doesn't come loose. You don't want to use um, you don't want to use zip ties here because we're going to be adding more on top so we actually are going to need that pipe cleaner to hold it in place. Or you can use floral wire if you want to. Okay, so doing the same thing here and we're going to just continue down in nine inch little poofs all the way down to the bottom. And then one more time, nine inches. And you could just kind of eyeball it. You don't have to measure it if you don't want to. Just whatever you want to do. I just want to get them pretty much the same size. And I'm pulling them off to the side, as you noticed. When I get to the bottom, I'm just going to give it a little dovetail. And then we're going to start on the bottom, where we left off, doing the same as we did up top. But I want my bottom to be a little bit longer, a little hanging down piece, so it will be somewhat you know, the same size as the one that's on there. You can go ahead and cut it in a dovetail. And then we're gonna go right back up this side doing the same thing. When you twist it, just push them off to the side and push that loop off to the side. Since we're gonna be applying that sign down in the middle, we really don't need anything getting in our way. So most of the goodness needs to be on the outside. That's where you're gonna see it anyway, not hidden underneath the sign. So we're back to the top now and then you can just cut that little piece off. Now we're gonna start adding some little, um, a little stack of ribbon to each one of the pipe cleaners. And we're gonna start that off by measuring our burlap ribbon. It doesn't have any wire in it. And I'm making these about nine, it looks like about eight or nine inches there. I'm going to make enough for each stack to have two. So since we had eight, we're going to do 16. You can go ahead and dovetail those ends, make those nice and pretty. If you have any little snaggy pieces hanging off, go ahead and trim that off too. Look how nice that looks. Perfect. Continue along in this process all the way. I hope y'all are having a beautiful day and that you're getting inspired and crafty. I um, hope you're having the nice pretty weather that we've been having. It's been sunshiny, beautiful outside. We do expect some rain tomorrow, but you know, nothing grows without that rain. All right, we're gonna take our next ribbon. And I just decided rather than to use just the black, I wanted to use this checked ribbon. I have some left that I got from the thrift store. And I think it looks nice with the sign. You know, the sign is black and kind of a brown and green color. I wanna go ahead and use it. There's no sense hoarding things if we're not gonna use them. I mean, I loved it enough to get it, so I may as well use it, right? Now, I'm only gonna need eight of those. And this is how we're gonna assemble those little stacks. You're gonna make somewhat of an X pattern and then right in the middle, standing up straight, put that little check ribbon. Then just kind of walk your fingers toward each other from either side, and this is what you get. Now, rather than doing them all at once and putting them aside, I'm just gonna go ahead here and apply them down as I get them prepared in my hand. So holding it tightly, pressing down tightly, and give it a few twists, and then you can pull your little pieces apart. If you've watched any of my videos, bow making or wreath making in the past, then you know I do a lot of fluffing. So you're gonna see me do a lot of that in here because it's important. It's really important to make your items look like you really put in some work. You know, you really put in an effort, effort to make it a high-end look. So, you know, you gotta do those little extra steps. We don't get too big of a rush. Make sure you make it pretty. So the same thing here, I'm twisting it really tight and then kind of fluffing out my tails to see how I want them to look. And I like this, I think this looks pretty good. Now I'm fluffing them outward, but I will be pulling them off to the side somewhat when we put down that sign in the middle. I've gotten some new subscribers over the past month and I'm very grateful 
for you, I want to give you a nice warm welcome. And for you who have been here from the beginning, I appreciate you so very much. I really do. I try to get to those comments and give you little hearts and, and comment and talk to you because it's important to me that we get to know each other. I want you to feel comfortable here. I want you to want to come back for more. And with that said, if you're enjoying the videos, I would very much appreciate if you could share it with somebody who you think might like it. And giving it a thumbs up and commenting, all those things really help my channel. And it is very appreciated by me. So, once you get all the way down to the bottom, you've got all of those covered. You can start to fluff out. Now, I'm just kind of fluffing them pulling them around, twisting them around. They're not glued in place, so you can move them around. And I'm gonna do the same thing with those loops that are underneath. They can help support your bow, so you can put that, that loop in the back, pull your bow over the top, and then try to just focus most of your attention on pulling those things to the outside. You can see what I've done here, how you can see a space in the middle. That's gonna be okay. You will not see that once we get our sign there. So we're going to kind of arrange this. I'm going to pull it all out to the side and make it look nice and fluffy and pretty. It always makes a difference, just like with a Christmas tree. You pull it straight out of the box, it's flat and looks kind of sad, but once you get it fluffed out, you can see it in all of its glory. So we won't need these little cleaners, pipe cleaners anymore. You can go and just trim those down. And then this is how it's going to look so far. So there's a company I've worked with before. They're called HTV Runt, and they sell crafting supplies at a great value. They're having a spring sale right now across four platforms, and they're gonna be doing a giveaway. It's from March 16th to April the 2nd. I'm gonna have the links for you down below in the description box. Y'all, they even sell stuff on Amazon and Walmart, so you can find them just about anywhere. Look at all the stuff that they sent me. I've got vinyl, I've got transfer tape, sublimation paper, a wax making kit. This is just a small sample of what they offer all the time. So be sure that you go and check them out and get you some goodies. All right, so this is a very easy way to attach your signs down to your projects without having to put glue all over your projects. We're just gonna have glue on this sign and not even on that wreath at all. Just put a little hot glue down, put your pipe cleaner down, a little more hot glue, and then a piece of paper, and that's gonna hold it down, lock it in place. Once it is cool to the touch, because you don't wanna pull anything loose, you're going to settle it down and see where you wanna place it on your broom. I'm going to take my little wires and twist them downward like this, and then just push them through the bows and the loops so that I can wrap it around the actual broom handle. And that is easy to do. Once you fill it in the back, you can just flip it over and then twist it around. Now keep in mind, you don't wanna twist it down too tight. Don't pull it too tight or you'll smash it. You want it to kind of appear that it's another layer and that it's floating above it. That look is just the best look in my opinion. You can certainly do it any way that you like because we like to make things personal. We like to say that there is no wrong in it, so do it however you really like it. For my personal taste, I like to give it a little breathing room. So we're gonna do that on the top and on the bottom. And then you can flip it over and pull things back out in the way that they're gonna be pretty and pleasing to your eye. Excuse my head in the video. This was a long broom, so I had to get my camera way, way above my table. So you're gonna see a lot of my head, shoulders, and shirt. Okay, so you can see here, we had them all pulled to the side. Now we're gonna add some florals and some greenery. So I don't need all the stem or those leaves right now on these roses. I'm just gonna trim them down and then pull off whatever will pull off. I'm not gonna throw them away though because I used them in the very end of the video. So be sure you stay tuned so that you can see that. All right, then we're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna cut down our ferns. And these ferns are really nice considering they came from Dollar Tree. They are plastic, so they're not fabric, but when ferns come out, they're kind of shiny when they're new and fresh in the woods. So I'm okay with this. And they're so thick, you can actually pull it apart just like I did 
and have separate pieces. I want to take one long piece and yep I'm gonna try it here I think it looks good that way then I'm gonna add my hot glue and go ahead and press it into the broom and right behind that frame it's gonna hold it in place nicely I want to go ahead and continue down with a little more of that burn kind of I'm going to kind of get it down over a little bit of the broom just to kind of make a good transition between what we have going on up top and the bottom of the broom. Twist them around, you know, move them around, do what you think you like. I'm going to go up here to the top and I'm going to add some little off center to the side here. I'm just kind of gluing it down to the back of the sign and holding it in place. I'm going to take my rose and then feed it down right into that part. You can add a little bit behind the head of the rose to hold it down, whatever you need to do. You can certainly use any florals that you like. I just had these. They haven't been used, so I thought this would be a good project for it. I'm going to add that little tan one right next to it, or natural colored one and then continue to add here on the bottom. I think I might have had a piece or two left of the fern, but I used pretty much the entire pig. That's not bad. I got a lot of coverage too for, you know, for just $1.25. And I'm just gonna continue along and fill out here and there, adding a little at a time till it looks kind of like I like it. And pretty much it makes a, an upside down triangle shape. Alright, so I'm going to take this beautiful stuff. I don't know what it is, but I love it. I don't think it's baby's breath, but who knows. I'm going to cut this off in a variety of lengths. And then just start laying it down on top of the fern. You can put it down and hide it underneath your sign. Just get that stem right up in there. You can see it kind of locks in there. And then go ahead and just play with it a little bit and move your fern around and that beautiful, whatever that is, that other beautiful piece of greenery. And then we're going to be adding a couple of those little pieces into the centers of each of those little bundles. And you can pretty much tell, whatever ribbon color you put on top, you can tell. Just go right in there, kind of behind the sign, and it will stay nicely in place. And you know, this I made this for spring, but this is certainly an arrangement that could last you all year long. It really would. Very simple. There's nothing in here that really says that it is only springtime or any other type of year so you could just use it anywhere this could be hanging on your door all year long or you could also hang it on a wall in a narrow space that needs a little something extra we have a lot of those walls in our house because we have a lot of windows so we have some little short walls or narrow walls and these types of projects always give you the perfect little touch a little something little something extra where a wreath maybe won't fit but you'd like something a little more than just a sign so you can see how I've done here you can see the process that I'm using and I know that Dollar Tree has some I don't know cattails baby breath um, they have all kinds of little berry picks something like that would also look pretty in here now I'm going to go down to my ribbon and I'm going to use 24 inch strips. We are going to make a funky bow. Yes, a funky bow. That's a funny, funny name for a bow, isn't it? It's an easy one, y'all. Alright, so I'm going to do the same thing with this satin black ribbon. It is not wired either. Then I'm going to use this plaid ribbon and I'm going to use two pieces of it. So two of the burlap, one of the black, and two of this one. I'm going to fold this one over. I'm going to measure five inches up, pinch it in the middle, 
and then press it firmly between my thumb and forefinger. And I'm gonna hold it in place. We're gonna make the next one. Same process, it's gonna be the same measurements and process on each one of these. But I don't want my two black and whites together, so I'm gonna just separate it with my fingers until I'm ready to place it in the bow. I'm gonna do my satin one here, folding it over, pinching it toward the center. It's a beautiful black, beautiful. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this one. And you can see that all of them are together except for the one where I'm holding it. Now I'm going to add it. So you see, I just added that one in with the other ones and they're all being held tightly in my hand between my thumb and my pointer finger. I'm just using it like a clamp. I'm holding these all in place. And now I've added my last loop and tail. So see here, got a handful of loops, right? I'm gonna take a zip tie. I have white and black. I just picked up the black, no particular reason. Then I'm using that one. Before I tighten it all the way down, I'm gonna check the lengths of my loops just to make sure. Do a little adjusting. And then when all of them are right where I like them, I'm gonna tighten that up as tight as I can get it and use my wire cutters and trim off the tail. Well, the extra of the, the tie, I mean. And now I'm gonna work on the tails. I'm gonna kind of pull them outward and kind of upward so that they're on top where the loops are. So they're not like hanging. The tails of the funky bow are not going to be hanging. They're gonna kind of spread out. So you see here, kind of like an octopus, right? If an octopus had that many heads. All of those little legs are gonna be out. So I'm just fluffing the bow and I'm going to twist things around and dovetail the ends. This just always, in my opinion, gives it a nicer look. But certainly, you could do just a slant in your ribbon if you would like. But I wouldn't recommend leaving them just flat because if you leave them with a flat cut, they're probably going to ravel. So, just go ahead and do this all the way around until each one of those tails look gorgeous. I'm gonna lay it down here and trying to separate some of the tails, moving them around. Um, you know, you can twist them, twist them, give them a little tug, pull them to the side, and then you can divide up all of the colors and the patterns if you would like. I'm gonna use a little floor wire here. I'm gonna cut off about 12 inches of it, just because I wanna be sure that I have plenty. Flip the bow over and then try to find the closest spot next to the base of the bow and go through it with that wire. Now, if you are, if you have enough forethought to place a pipe cleaner in your hand before you tighten your zip tie all the way down, you can save yourself this step. But this is usually how I do it. Good because I get in a hurry sometimes. Now I'm just gonna take those two pieces of wire Feed them through, flip it over. You can see one is on the side and one is through the center of the broom. Get the greenery out of the way and then just twist it down tightly so that my bow does not wiggle and shake loose. And cut it off and press those wires into that broom. And then when you pull it over, you can see that I have my bow placed off to the side. So I have my roses off to the right and my bow is giving it some weight on the bottom left. Again with the fluffing, getting the little webs off of it from the glue, and then just pulling and twisting these whichever way they wanna go, whichever way you want them to go. I just wanna be sure that you can see my E under there. And this is how it looks. What do you think? It's different, right? It's definitely different, but I really like it. Now just for the back, take that top loop that we use, that top piece, twist it onto itself and make a little hanger for it. Now you can hang it on the wall. This is how it's gonna look. I absolutely love it. Of course I do. I think it's pretty. I think it's something that I can use for quite some time in my home. It can be used pretty much anywhere. Anywhere you've got that little space is gonna be perfect. 
I would love for you to subscribe if you have not already hit that little bell. I would love for you to be part of my YouTube family. If you liked the video, I would very much appreciate a thumbs up. And again, if you can think of someone who would enjoy this video, please share it with them. It really helps my channel, and that really helps me. Thank you so much for stopping by, and I'll see you again soon. Bye!